Good afternoon. Uh, I'll be sharing our experience of cataract surgery in diabetic macularedema. As you know, cataract is one of the major causes of vision loss in diabetics. And in another 10 years, we are going to have more than 33 crore diabetics in the world. And diabetics have two to four times higher likelihood of developing cataract and a risk which is 10 to 20 times higher in patients which are less than 40 years of age. And 20% of the cataract surgeries are performed in diabetic. So we have a patient pool where we have a greater risk of developing problems in the post-cataract surgery and what all we need to do about these cases. DME is also one of the main causes of poor visual results and diabetic patients undergoing tracheoemulsification appear to have a doubling of the retinopathy progression rate at one year follow-up. And the patients with cataract, they have a reduced visual equity. The cataract interferes with adequate examination of the retina and it makes photocoagulation difficult. The challenges of cataract surgery in diabetics are the worsening of the macular edema, progression of diabetic retinopathy, sometimes anterior segment neovascularization, and increased risk of both intra as well as post-operative complication. And as you know, cataract surgery in diabetic leads to greater breakdown of the blood aqueous barrier than the non-diabetics. And post-op VEGF levels on day one are, the, are at its peak and after the cataract surgery, it takes one month for the VEGF levels to come back to normal in the aqueous. Now the approach in these patients needs a good preoperative workup, when to operate, choice of the procedure, post-op care, follow-up, and then the role of the vitrectomy in these cases. The preoperative workup should be very comprehensive and should be an integral part and compulsory part of a preoperative workup before the... Uh, this is a case which we saw two weeks after surgery operated elsewhere. Uh, he had adequately controlled glycemia, normal lipid profile, no laser had been done earlier, and probably patient doesn't remember if the fundus was examined in detail or not. Now it is, it is medically legally important that all these diabetics before cataract surgery have a good documentation of their fundus picture before and after cataract surgery. When to operate these cases? The intervention depends on the stage of diabetic retinopathy and the extent of the cataract. Extent of lenticular opacities will decide the timing and nature of the intervention. If the visibility permits, DME should be treated first. Otherwise, cataract surgery first and then an aggressive management of DME after that. Uh, this is one of the old patients before the, the anti-VEGF era. This patient had a good metabolic control, preoperative visual equity 6-12 both eyes, bilateral FACO with lens implantation done at a gap of about 3 to 4 weeks. Post-operative, the vision was 636 in both the eyes and you can see the worsening of the macular edema. So there is no doubt at all that if a patient has existing DME and you are going ahead with the cataract surgery, there is going to be worsening of the disease process. Uh, these patients do need a close follow-up. Uh, these cases do need a very close follow-up. This is the case of a 57-year-old female patient with type 2 diabetes diagnosed with cataract and a non-center DME in both the eyes. Patient had visual equity of 624 both eyes. Right eye intervent surgery under cover of Avastin, whereas the left eye was operated without any pre of VEGF. And you can see the difference in the result in the two eyes. The eye which had a VEGF and which had a Avastin injection, the macula is okay, but there is worsening of the macular edema in an eye which didn't have a pre of VEGF. Now those patients who have a non-center DME or they have a history of treatment of DME in the past, have an increased risk of developing central involvement of macular edema 16 weeks after the cataract surgery. So a follow-up at 16 weeks is very important in all these patients. So even if the patient doesn't have a central involving DME, they need to be kept under a close follow-up. Uh, Intra-op VEGF injection followed by focal laser is another option of treatment available for these cases. Pre the pre-op anti-VEG injection before FACO surgery prevents increase in DME and uh, we have now started using the micropulse yellow laser multipaltron for these cases and we should be able to see the results in about another six months to one year time. Does it make any difference in the regression as well as the final visual equity? Uh, needless to say that the systemic factors have to be reviewed and especially the HB1C and the lipid has to be maintained in the post-op period. 
This is another case who came to us in 2012. First presentation, Vision 612, non-centered DME, advised uh, laser, which the patient refused. Patient comes back in 2014. The vision has dropped to 636. Patient has a cataract and now has a center DME. Patient is advised injection western, gets the injection, doesn't respond, gets another injection, he doesn't respond, and then the patient is given Ozodex. After that, the visual equity improves to 624. There is a resolution of the edema. Patient is taken up for surgery, and after surgery, uh, fluorescent angiography, four weeks after surgery, shows the changes, and then a focal photocoagulation is done. So as has been mentioned earlier, that those cases which do not respond to anti vagar factors, you have an option to give them steroids, but you must control the macular edema before you take up these cases for surgery, if the clarity of the media persists. So consider orthodox in a patient with DME when a western fails and effective laser is not possible due to cataract. Consider cataract surgery under cover of orthodox followed by an effective macular laser. Uh, intravitreal injection of renexam can be given during the cataract surgery also. This is a patient who has been diabetic for 8 years. His visual acuity is 636, gets an injection of western. The retina flattens out. Uh, and the FACO was done after the resolution of the edema. After FACO and IOL and following macular laser, the final visual improved to 6-9. So these cases do have uh, rewarding, rewarding results uh, in the long run. But sometimes, as we see in 